Catherine, welcome to the first reading of 2015 in the Poetic Research Bureau. Tonight we have uh, Felix Bernstein and Cecilia, Port Cecilia Corgan, both persons tonight have asked that we do not introduce them, but we have received an urgent missive from a third person who asks that uh, we introduce him uh, in something uh, slightly louder than a golf whisper. And that is Leopold Grant. Very, very happy to have Leopold tonight. And I have to read this to the letter. So. Leopold Brandt is a budding fashion designer whose talents have been profiled in Interview Magazine, Art in America, and Modern Magazine. He will be the first in-house fashion designer for the Andy Warhol Museum in 2015. His recent salon series, White, has hosted such luminaries as John Ashbery, Harold Bloom, David Joslett, Adam Fitzgerald, and James Franco. His first chapbook, The Dandyisms of Leopold Brandt, will be released by Mark by Mark Books, with a simultaneous bootleg edition appearing on Gauss PDF. Ryan McNamara placed Dandyisms in his top 10 things of 2013 in Next Magazine, praising the book for being, quote, so epically performative Maybe the most performative thing ever to be put to paper. Challenges every institution and yet is so sweet and heartfelt. I only can hope more poetry will come out of that, will come out that references this much everyday queer experience from Lana Del Rey to Maison Kaiser. The New York Times recently dubbed him and his brother Hyrie the new princes of New York. And in an art forum, Christopher Glazik has praised their style for being the most beautiful contemporary incarnation of queer melancholia, a radical, a radically feminist post-internet stab in patriarchal authorities back. In 2016, he will be launching a new effort in conjunction with the True Colors charity organization that will award the John Ashbery's Pouch Award to 12 creative homeless queer youth every year. This award gives poets the chance to sit on Ashbery's couch and to study his every move and take notes. <laughs> John himself will pick the poet he likes the best and blurb their first book, <laughs> which True Colors will publish vis-a-vis -vis their poetry Tumblr, poetry by Truce Colors Tumblr.com. He will also be debuting a new line of his signature Frank O'Hara yachts at the Frank O'Hara Fire Island Reading Group this summer. Please welcome. Yeah, we'll Lana Del Rey on my iPod and looking at this young boy, I think he was about six years old, 
um, looking at the artwork of David Wojnarowicz on his iPad, and together we had this moment of synchronicity, and I, I immediately wrote three poems and an essay about this experience, which are forthcoming in our forum, Moose, uh, and Paper Magazine's poetry edition, uh, which will have no poets, only gallery artists, but they're the best poets, I think. Uh, so lovely. And it was a lovely year in politics. I know the year just ended, wasn't it? Uh, we, we learned all about trans people, which was just so wonderful. And if you had Facebook, you learned way too much about trans people, I think, just every day. Uh, just streams of it. But, but we learned that Black Lives Matter, which is wonderful. And, and Blake Lively doesn't matter. Who knows? Does anyone even remember who Blake Lively is? Uh, and uh, so I'm here tonight, um, uh, sadly, Leopold Brandt is here, but not Felix Bernstein and Notes on Post-Conceptual Poetry are not here. Hashtag Jewish Lives Matter. Um, they, they do matter, but he wanted me, his adorable publisher, Matthew Timmons, who's filming tonight, uh, wanted me to read something on behalf of Felix Bernstein. He couldn't be here because it's dangerous for the Jews right now to just even show themselves in a public space like this. So I thought I'd come on behalf of him because, you know, my lost heritage and everything. He just thought it would be safer that way. So, uh, okay, so this is from his forthcoming book, Notes on post control from Insert Blanc Press. You know, the Blanc is very important there. Okay, so, uh, okay, the, this was never, has never been read before. This is called The Wonder Kids. The Wonder Kids follow the precedent of Frank O'Hara, Kenward Elmsley, Wayne Kostenbaum, and Kevin Killian, blending fashion, pop culture, the faggy quotidian, and the art world into poetry, and flavoring Flarf and the Girlesque with Miami metrosexual hipster summer frivolity. Youngish Bay Area poet Brendan Brown is also an important precedent for the group taking seriously, po talking seriously and poetically about Kanye West and Taylor Swift. In the 2010s, New York-based metrosexual Ben Fama quickly passed this style down to Andrew Durbin, and together they run Wonder Press, which has since published Kate Durbin, not Andrew's sister, and the older <coughs> poet Kevin Killian. Durbin, with his incredible speed and efficiency, created a cluster of gallery artists who share his taste, a younger variant of the clusterfuck aesthetics of Bjorn Melgaard and Thomas Hirshhorn, but more delicate, pink, and sweet, post-camp, hyper-camp. In the art world, the person who comes closest to this style is Ryan Chapartin, especially his sculpture work, sculptural work. In pop culture, there is the hypercamp, post-feminist stylings of Nicki Minaj, Katy Perry, Iggy Azalea, and Harmony Korine's Spring Breakers, and more importantly, young and emerging queer rappers. Jerry Saltz is getting at this style when he mentions Gaga's art pop, a sincere inversion of pop art, along with her artist pals, Marina Abramovich and Coons, along with Kanye, as examples of a new uncanny, in which the celebrity claims to be keeping it real in a way that is alienating and virtual, yet enchanting. Salt likes this stuff and blurbed Kate Durbin's book for Wonder Press. Experimental queer filmmaker Bruce LaBruce recently complained about the more famous examples of this style in Notes on Camp and Anti-Camp. My satiric alter ego, Leopold Brandt, parodies the strategically felicitous intersection of pop art, Marxism, queer theory, fashion, and social climbing. Of course, hypercamp art also involves a great deal of self-parody, but often it risks morphing into a lax bro, keeping it real, queer essentialism. Like all works caught up in fashion, the problem of the neophilic and basic as fuck arises, i.e., I had the most, the eighth most cited piece on hyperallergic last year about normcore, which then got picked up so I could do a piece for T, the Times Fashion Magazine, or that gentrified social climbing, click-baiting, trend-sniffing, basic-as-fuck tool just wrote another blog complaining about gentrification, or that basic-as-fuck tool just made another meme like reduced, reductive Facebook post saying how memes are reductive when all he does is communicate through memes. To a certain extent, this is the haunting specter for all the critics of the present time. Few political activists or aestheticians even those interested in small press hermeticism or anti-status anarchy are willing or interested in not being on Facebook, not subscribing to the most blatant and pathetic self-promotional and social climbing tactics, and mostly in the end want to be in HuffPo, following search engine optimization conventions. Often MFA programs in art make it seem like back in the day, like the 60s or 70s or the days of romanticism or something, that that sort of art or politics was possible. But today it is retrograde to attempt to make visionary or separatist works. In general, in fact, basic as fuck is a problem in poetry right now as it attempts to deal with the visual arts. At worst, it can, come at, it can become a place for people whose attempts at multimedia or net art 
wouldn't find a sympathetic glance in an undergraduate art world bait visual arts class. But yet they can find a home for the same sort of tactics, a home where much more attention is paid to them in poetry, in a room such as this, right now. Wonderful surprise that you're here. I love LA award season. It's so magical. Um, <laughs> so, you must be so so very pleased to have. Uh, oh. First, I just want to thank all my fans so much for being here. Uh, I really, it means so much. You guys are the only reason I do this. And I, I just, I'm dying. I mean, start planning my funeral right now. This, this is insane. I just. R.I.P. me. You, uh, you must be so uh, so tickled to have the, the Golden Globe nomination. I know none of you heard this because it wasn't announced oh. everywhere, but she received a Golden Globe. The truth is, you know, it takes a lot to thrill me, Leo. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I mean, you know, I've been I've been hard at this for, for a long time. I was I was working at AOL.com for about 15 years. I didn't get so much gold watch. A couple weeks in show business, and I have a Golden Globe nomination. I'm a natural. Uh, but you know, I mean, it's, it's because I respect my instrument, really. I I don't do drugs. I rarely drink alcohol. Uh, you know, I I am the new Hollywood in many ways. The, the old Hollywood that promises getting B12 shots. <laughs> uh, so, darling, um, who 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 are you up against? And um, who is your competition? <laughs> I mean, are you going to go to the awards? Yes, certainly I'll go. Certainly. Oh. Do you so? And we're all we're all wondering. We're all wondering. Sorry, darling. And do you have do you have a date, darling? Because we're all wondering. Well, gaping eyes at you. Oh. Hi, how are you? It's so nice to see you. Um, what? Well, do you have a date already? Because oh, they're yes, all wanting to sure. know. Yes, of course I have a date. You're the only one that has trouble with that, dear. <laughs> <laughs> um. Unfortunately, if I revealed who it was, I would possibly swing the next election. Oh. <laughs> well, we, we all know that you get around, darling. Um, so, do you want to tell us, please, you know you're very coy about your private life, usually. And I've read interview after interview where you, where you talk about some book that you wrote, and it's just, you never talk about who you're fucking and what's... Just tell us. Just tell us who, who it is. But tell us now. Oh, well. I, I, gosh, it was a little tense out here earlier, wasn't it? Mm -hmm. <laughs> You're really quite uh, alienating, <laughs> aren't you? Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> this is what a life, life in art is, is about alienating everyone around you. <laughs> for you, for you, yes. <laughs> do you, do, well, that was mean, but do you, so do you? <laughs> So this building globe that no one knows about, um, do you have a, what category is it, by the way? You know, they didn't tell me. They didn't, yeah. I think it's general. I think it's general. Okay, do you want me to help you? It's just very fatiguing. Yes. Do you have, so I'm sure you, as a writer, you must, the acceptance speech, but speech must be, you must have been writing this for years since I you were a child. I always have an acceptance speech on hand. Oh, uh, okay. <laughs> it's quite simple, really. I mean, it's, it's, it's an easy one because I really don't have anyone to thank but myself. Uh, you know, I, I deserve everything I've gotten and I've worked hard for it. Okay. So, that's basically the message. Well, you, everyone is so sympathetic to you yeah, right now, Yeah, So is, is Netscape going to miss you? A oh, with AOL, darling. AOL, like us, whatever the fuck you are. Yeah. Are they going to miss you, darling? Yeah. Well, I mean, perhaps I, perhaps they will. I'm certainly not going to miss them. You know, okay. ever since these global changes okay. have been happening, they just, AOL does not have the kind of heft that they once did. And if there's one thing that thrills me, it's, it's power. You know? I'm like a moth to the flame for it. <laughs> 
much more of her last time. Yes. Much more. And so I wanted to just compliment you on your physique thank you, tonight. Thank you. It's very and, sweet. And um, you a bit. And just to yes. say that uh, <laughs> she is just, she's in LA now, and she's just so ready to be an actress. Don't we all think, yes? <laughs> not, not, not a novel. Not a novel. But an actress. <laughs> definitely. I know where I stand. Yes. Yeah. Okay, though. Oh, uh, well, yes. Anyway. I, oh, yes. I'm very excited about, about the Golden Globes and uh, the dress I'm going to be wearing. And, you know, I, I, even though it's Galliano, I just don't, I don't really mind about that. I think it's just awful when people's privacy gets invaded, don't you? I think yeah, no, we all love... You're a genius with Tool, you're a genius with Tool, and that's that. No, we all love Galliano here. Yes. I mean, okay. we, who hasn't said exactly. something, you know, you're, you're just, you know, you're on the phone. Come on, and I don't want to say too much about the... You know, I think the phone yeah. just yeah. makes you want to say the worst possible thing. Well, you certainly do. Yeah, I always do. When I see that phone, I'm like, what's the worst thing I could say? Fuck you, mom. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, sure. An email, anything yeah. like that. Anything where it's communication. Communication with other humans. Yeah. Communication with other humans. I want to just, Rejection I want to just be yes. so racist Absolutely. and anti-Semitic. Instantly. Well, oh. ultimately, I guess there's not really much But who else are you? That. So who are you going to the Golden Globes with? I don't want to, I mean, I'm, I'm going with Harry, but I don't want to say too much about it. Oh, but, yeah. that little gay midget. Harry Styles. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. Is that your name? It's nothing. It's nothing. That's Harry it's Styles. Nothing. Taylor Swift's leftovers. It's hardly, worth, it's hardly worth mentioning, really. But, you know, we all know that he had this infamous relationship with Taylor Swift, and we all, I love Harry Styles personally, but I think unlike Taylor, you'll swallow, because she always spits everything she eats. I heard she prefers to eat after. Oh. But, uh, <laughs> okay. I mean, it, it doesn't really matter. I, I, I'm going out with someone else right afterwards. I'm going out with Alexander Skarsgård. But, you know, the Slavic men are so feminine. I just, you know, I'm not sure if that's a goer. Oh. But. Well, this is, you know, this is a whole different side of you, Seth, and I think we're all happy that we came out so that we could learn that you're, you're just open on all ends. <laughs> <laughs> I would say you're dripping. <laughs> you know, it's not as glamorous as it looks or sounds, really. I, uh, I, but you know, a woman's needs must be met. Yes. And that's that, you know, I, I, I suppose, you know, it's, it's nice, I mean, uh, I have heard in the past that I can be a bit uh, demasculating, uh, but you know, it's, it's nice to have the opportunity to express myself. And, but I did hear that a lot, a lot. So, so you've had uh, some sort of some sort of a problem with this this demasculating. You said this is this does this ha does this hamper you in this sort of world? You know, the dating thing. Yeah, I don't know if I would say that. I mean, you know. I had double the chances of a date on a Tuesday night because I am a bisexual, you know. Oh. Yes. Sure. Buy me something. And I get really sexual. Buy <laughs> Buy sexual. <laughs> no, I can you know, That's wonderful. <laughs> That's you. wonderful. You, you know, there are those Have you tweeted that one already or is it Oh after tonight. I was you, saving it for you. Okay, no, thank mm -hmm. you so much. That's wonderful. But, you know, there's, there are those who would call me a weekender in that regard, but I, I think, you know, if you go every weekend, you're kind of a resident of the community, right? I mean, you're, if you buy a place, you can have a long mortgage. It's, it's fine. And, you know, I, I really shouldn't say any more about this, because I've really, I've, I've already just, I've been the target of uh, the most Brutal rumors, <laughs> and I and I just I really have to keep my private life close to the vest in these days. I mean, I, I don't you know I don't know what it is. I just it feels like you know nothing <laughs> ever really works out. Uh, you know you, you put your best foot forward and you just you do you you try to make a connection, but you know I mean I, it's not that I don't have have good luck with dating. I mean I'll go out with someone, we'll have a nice time. 
second date, you have some wine, uh, I'll go back to their place, and it's just, there's always this, things will be going great. Mm -hmm. And then there's this moment when uh, we go home, you know, things become intimate, and there's just always this look in their eye when, when I disrobe, and they realize my entire body is, is covered in despair beneath my clothes. That's um, <laughs> what <laughs> Jennifer Lawrence's publicist is dealing with right now. Have you guys clicked on this link? I mean, the, the despair and self-abnegation, especially, you know, like around the kneecaps, is really hard to watch. No, I'm, I'm kidding. I'm kidding, of course. I mean, I think, I think that, you know, it's not the despair. I think the truth is that I really just, even though I, I do it professionally, I really don't know how to have fun. I don't know how to relax and have fun. Just to dress for it, really. Uh, it's not it's not for lack of opportunity, that's for sure. Ever ever since I became a star, everyone's been trying to fix me up with women. I mean it's like boom boom boom, blind date, blind, blind date. But I have a very bad history with blind dates. And I, I don't want to give you people the impression that I'm that I'm not a I'm I'm not a ready person because I, I think sex is a beautiful thing between two people. I think they believe it, darling. It's a beautiful thing between yeah. two people. And, yeah, I mean between five. It's absolutely fantastic. <laughs> You know, it just goes up from there. But. I, I personally, I see where you're coming from being a whore, but I personally, <laughs> personally, I don't like the smells. I just can't stand it. it. For me, just give me a, I just like Snapchat mm -hmm. and just, you know. You know, I was reading this, this study, I read, a, I read a, a Twitter the other day that said, if you like how you smell, it means you like yourself. Isn't that awful? <laughs> <laughs> disgusting, really. You like the way you smell? That is disgusting. Without, without any soap? <laughs> Ugh. Oh my goodness. Alright, well why don't you, darling, enough of this banter, because I think it's gone on far too long, don't you? You've really sort of told everyone all this horrifying stuff about yourself and your body image, but um, I think we've all gotten used to that now with Facebook, and your Facebook in particular. I'm um, just... It's on and on and on about your body image and your body and everything. But okay, so now let's why don't we talk about the media object tonight? Um, let me pull up my notes for this. Shall I read Don my book? Yes, shh, your media object. Oh, no one wants a book. No one wants a book. Okay, <laughs> Miss. No, no, no. Oh, you might want me to introduce it. I, I let me just give one introduction. Okay, fine. Yeah. Fine. Just hold fine. up the book. Hold the media object. <laughs> this is a media object that she's promoting. It's not a book. Don't worry. You don't have to read it. Um, <laughs> This was a wonderful media object that even the great... How many of us are fans of Ann Carson in here? Huge fans. She wrote... She wrote... While lacking some of the grace and dignity of Sappho, nonetheless... Nonetheless, Cecilia Corrigan is the greatest poet since Ann Carson. And I think, I think that took courage for her to say that because it's hard for a woman sort of late career to promote a young woman like yourself, you know? It's, don't you think that was a lovely gesture? It was. I know you were a little great. creeped she, out by it, but I thought it was great. She's a great old broad. Okay, so why don't you go ahead and sort of read from the book. We're here, this is a, this is a poetry reading. We want to hear you read from this damn book. Well, yeah, but did you tell them earlier about this my, one is on my condition? Sale. Oh. I, you oh, she has a condition. I, it's, I'm okay. I didn't I know just, you were I have a, yeah, I, uh, I have this, um, ego uh, agoraphobia. It's, uh, it's increasingly common uh, in my journey. I just have to stand, I need to be the tallest person in the room <laughs> um, if I'm going to perform. So uh, I just usually just do this. Um, you know, it's, it's actually, it's equally common in people of various heights. It doesn't have to do with my s smallness of stature. Um, but I hope that everyone can be respectful of uh, <laughs> issue that I have. Um, anyway, this, the point is that I would like to share my work, so. <laughs> this, uh, so, uh, a, a little backstory. Um, in, uh, in, in some of uh, Wittgenstein's diaries from when he was, uh, you know, growing up, he, he wrote about uh, certain interludes he had with, with a classmate named Peppy, or I think he might have actually been the son of the gardener, uh, if I meant to double check that, but if you, if you Google uh, one of the things in the bibliography of the book, you'll find out. In, <laughs> anyway, um, the lead-in is, um, when we met, I was approximately 50 years old and you were approximately 27. 
I was a good teacher, but sometimes I got in trouble for hitting the children. I'm talking about you because you were a different kind of smart than I was, but a kind I could still recognize as smart, which wasn't so common for me. I used to love giving you a hard time in my lectures, which were really more like debates, conversations between the two of us. I really went after you, not like, you see, I conflated you with my first love an adolescent named Peppy, who was double check our gardener's son. When my colleagues at Princeton University constructed the the theater of computation, the universe of machines, they allotted jobs to the various women computers with care. These are actual jobs you should be so lucky to get in this economy with these revelations. Isn't it terrible how lonely I am? My peppy, I pretended to know your name. A true heart doesn't know who is murmuring. Picture me murmuring. My bad spelling in youth is connected with the whole rest of my character. I want to do everything to it. Never have I ever been a margin. When I smoke, no smoke comes out. When I love language, no quo comes out. Some things are invisible. No, they're not. I must not make a case for it. I cannot describe what an eerie impression the H in the English word ghost makes on me. And I must not make fun of it. When the word is spoken, it doesn't sound particularly special, but if I see it written for me, the effect never fails. I think I am seeing a spirit. Oh, I'm sorry. My lexicon fell out. There had to show you peppy. Sometimes things are really back then and not about this tree or table. I can define them in terms of their um, use, usually note to self. Dear wit, sometimes there was a great intensity or erotic charge, often unperceived and usually not shared by the other. At least once the other was a girl, but, but who am I to say? I'm linking to you, nature boy. Link, an incantation that is supposed to bring lean soon seems efficacious sooner or later. There are six words differently arranged around me. I'm a magnetic ring. Ask me anything. Love and pride with clear high voice, the word tenderness, the tricky unicorn, the knocked off. To spell something, ask me to spell something. We went out looking for a combination of rocks and dirt behind the house. He asked me to open my mouth so that he could look at my teeth, so I did. F-A-R, far. L-O-S, laws. German is one of the languages they spoke. M-Y-S-T, mist. R-U-V, rubbish. This is a movie, do not fear it. This is a movie, so come to the movie theater. Love, the HN, mist, rubbish, relation to the Jews, relation to Peggy, love and pride, knocking hat off, break with peace, suffering in class. Here we are in the theater with our guns and the dark and no one, no one, no one, no one, no one, and oh, when we speak, we don't incorrectly, it is exact, it is three sticks, high and clear for a note, cracking in the long grass of our fathers, we must lie down with our use as if sense were an atmosphere a company, hey, are you ignoring me? No? Oh, you died in August, in 1914. They always die. Not as an errors, but as an outside judgment schlecht. His child assistant brings him a stone. I do not know him in this photograph, but he stood near me. His features change into popping tears, and my features, well, what I meant to prove is what I was unable to prove, that I wanted to see you tomorrow, difference. See you tenderest, to difference. Diffidence, diffidence looks too slight. It is like saying non-actual. It is surely remarkable that people don't realize earlier that sooner or later it's going to rain anyhow. Marry me sound, music sound, marry me numbers, or be my child. They always die, and I that they make fun of me. I want them to address me, to show him my teeth in headquarters. Back then when I began talking about the world and not about this tree formally, I don't love quiet, I love you, I think, numbers. You are the beautiful ones, but you never tell me your name. You get it, though. <laughs> no one wants to help you clear me. <laughs> Apathetic LA audience. <laughs> but this is a good moment for you. Because you read you read that boring poetry and we all stuck here. No, 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 that was wonderful. But just keep going because you don't need that media object anymore. <laughs> You've got it, darling, because we're all here still we're all still here. <laughs> yes, keep going, we're all still here. We're all still here for you. Because it's you we came for, darling. I saw, I saw the other day that uh, the Jean Monnet ran to cases that were open. <laughs>
It means a lot to me. Because <laughs> um, I was very... I wish they could just find out who did it. Because the angel was taken from us uh, and just smished, smashed, smushed out on the basement floor. I don't... Uh, I can't sleep. I've had nightmares many years, and uh, I want to have just know who did it. Um, you know, it has a lot of uh, there's a lot of effect on me because actually, at one point, I was actually kidnapped when I was uh, younger, um, and it was very it was a terrible time. I uh, I uh, I you know I, I made it through, but uh, you know I was standing outside my school, and these men pulled up in a black van with tinted windows, and they asked me. If I wanted to go to a land where everyone was kind and beautiful and all we did was eat candy and cookies and soda. And, you know, I thought about it and I said, what the fuck? Because, yeah. you know, I mean, my, my doctoral program was, was on hiatus at the time, so it was okay. So I hopped in the van. You know, next thing I know, I'm, I'm barreling over like the George Washington Bridge, and we're just going to some horrible part of New Jersey. And uh, you know, I'm, 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 I'm shackled in this basement to a pipe. I'm being beaten with chains. There's, there's, you know, I'm, I'm covered in my own excrement. It's terrible. And they come down and they say, unless your parents pay us a hundred thousand dollars, you're never going to get out of here alive. So I say, okay, that's fine. Just send them the note. They send my parents the note. My father gets the note, you know, he opens it. My dad is, you know, he's had tenure for a really long time. He doesn't close read like he used to. So he, you know, he kind of skims it, he gets the gist. He makes a couple, like, light grammatical notes, and then he realizes breaking that is on, and he gets distracted. And he breaks so, you know, I'm, I'm fucked, basically, in this basement. Uh, you know, and, and, you know, then they just start, uh, you know, attacking me in all these different ways, and I'm just shackled, and, you know, I, I eventually managed to get out when they all just started, you know, like, putting their penises in all my orifices and just, you know, raping me, and I was just, I finally, like, escaped, because then I was like, ah, you know, get out of me. All right. As crickets. Not funny. And I know that, you know, my jokes, people sometimes say to me, you know, like, oh, you know, you know, it's a good learning experience because people say, oh, you know, you're not funny, you're like ironic, or it's like, you know, it's, it's, it's like kind of like funny to see you, like, like, you know, humiliate yourself, and I'm, you know, and it's, it's, you know, it's okay. It's okay. I, I can, I, I, it's, I thank you for your feedback, and I hope I can learn from it, and I hope I can grow from it. And, you know, uh, I just would like to ask you, uh, you know, sir, uh, if, you know, why exactly it is that uh, you would say I'm not funny, you know? Is it, uh, is it my syntax? Is it my timing? Or, you know, is it uh, the deep, <laughs> unknowable abyss between my legs? Is it the unknowable irrationality of my womb? <laughs> Is that why? Is that why I'm not funny? <laughs> is that why I'm not funny? Is your syntax up? Baby, baby, funny now? <laughs> baby, funny now? <laughs> okay, this is Cecilia Cecily Corrigan, her first time in LA, and I think she just she nailed it. Didn't she? Want to make it here, and I think um, something happened in, in the journey. <laughs> you know, um, darling. So, do you want to read more from this no, thing that you wrote? Be, 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 be. They don't want me to. No, darling. This is just it's LA flash trash. It's not. <laughs> not these people don't mean anything. This is just. Dress rehearsal for the next thing we're doing. Don't worry. I mean, I don't want to touch you, but is there anything else? Is there anything else I can do? I mean, I'm Let's. Let me just. If 
like him. Don't worry, because we're going to just. This is like an This is the wrong one. No, no, This little one. Okay. I'm going to make it all better. One, seven, nine, nine. Okay. This is song now. We're going to make it better with a musical number.